In the previous video, we already derived this four quadrant diagram, uh, and we said that in the first uh, quadrant, this is the PPF. Okay, we know this for sure because um, again, the two axes here show uh, the quantity of food and cloth respectively. Okay, therefore, any dots uh, in this quadrant. Uh, would be um, a combination between the two products. Okay, so when we connected these dots, then we should get uh, a, a boundary. Okay, and this boundary would be, um, you know, the maximum amount of food and cloth this hypothetical economy can produce for a given um, allocation of labor between the two industries. Okay. However, um, the, this um, even you know the, the, the chart looks pretty fancy, but it fails to uh, answer a very important question, which is how much labor will be employed in each sector, or put it differently, there are infinite number of combinations along this PPF, right? Where exactly the economy should choose to produce. Right? Is that at one or two or three? Where exactly it should stay to maximize its benefit? Right? Here, again, I would uh, strongly recommend you guys to pause the video and think about this. Okay? We're going to use another important uh, graphical tool you guys learned uh, in intermediate microeconomics. Okay? Again, the clue is. Um, when you guys derived um, the the uh, consumers' uh, behaviors, okay? Because remember here, um, the PPF or all of these things um, on the graph here are actually on the producer side, right? We talk about you know production of food and cloth. And we'll talk about labor as an input, so input of uh, production. So everything here is on the supply side, on the producer side, right? To be able to find the best place to, or best combination to produce for this economy, we're actually talking about an equilibrium, right? For an equilibrium, we need supply and demand. So we need to think about, you know, what is happening among the consumers in this economy, right? Pause the video and think about what graphical tool or what curve we actually need here to find uh, what we call the optimal allocation of labor between two sectors. All right, let's check this out. Now, um, I hope you know some of you, or probably many of you, still remember uh, when we derived the demand curve or the consumers' behaviors uh, in intermediate microeconomics. We use a very important uh, curve uh, called indifference curve. Okay, now we're saying that. Um, a consumer faces two products. Okay, so again here, uh, food and cloth. Uh, he or she will decide, you know, uh, how much food and cloth um, that he or she needs, right? And we can, you know, drive the curve to show different combinations uh, between food and cloth would offer the same level of satisfaction for this consumer. Remember that? Okay. So, for example, here, uh, we show you one, the U1, uh, which is an indifference curve uh, between food and cloth. Okay. Uh, so, what we're saying is when uh, consumers moving along this curve U1, Let's say go from here all the way to here. Um, 
uh, we're going to see different combinations of food and cloth, but they all offer the same level of satisfactions for consumers. Okay. Now we use the letter U because this stands for utility. Okay. So this is a, a first level of utility. All right. Now we can do more of these. Okay. Actually, in the first quadrant, we have infinite number of indifference curves, like this one U three, and this one U two. Okay. Now, very interestingly, you probably already noticed that you know when we put the U two here, we find that it touches the PPF, right? In other words, the point two becomes in an, a, a tangent point. Okay, between the PPF and the indifference curve. Okay, now this point is what we call the optimal combination uh, between food and cloth uh, for this uh, imaginary economy. Okay. Now one thing I got to point out before we uh, move on. Uh, so here.、Um, I'm sorry. In in your intermediate microeconomics, when we talk about、uh, indifference curve, it's a consumer, right, or an individual. But here we're actually talking about all consumers in this economy. Okay. So there, you could say this is their aggregate indifference curve. All right. Now, why we believe this point two is the optimal. Um, combination between food and cloth. Once again, you can pause the video in trying to see if you can get the answer by yourself. Okay, it's actually pretty easy because here we we have to use another conclusion、uh, we learned from intermediate microeconomics. That is, you know, when we move、um, from U one to U two to U three. Um, when we go this way,、uh, the utility level gets higher and higher. Okay, so for a given amount of food and cloth, the best or the optimal outcome for this economy is to touch the the indifference curve, which is just tangent to the PPF at some point. Okay. Because that is the highest amount of utility this economy can achieve with the given amount of productive resources. Okay, more specifically here, productive resources means labor, capital, and land. Okay, the three factors we mentioned before. Now, graphically here, of course,、um, the tangent point is two, which is on U two. Okay, so of course U three is better. It's higher. It's, it means more satisfaction, but it is not achievable for the given amount of、uh, labor, capital, and land. Okay, U one is achievable, but it's not the best the economy can do. Right, the economy can achieve a higher level of satisfaction at U two. So that's why here we find. Two here, point two is the optimal、um, uh, combination between food and cloth. Now, once we figure this out, the rest of this is just a piece of cake. Okay, we already did that、um, in the previous video. So we go to the、um, total product curve for food and find that specific point. Okay,、uh, corresponding to this、um, food output level. And then we go down here to the horizontal axis. We find L F two. That's how much labor needed to produce this much food. Okay, and we do the same thing down here. Okay, we find th this is how many units of cloth the economy's consumers、uh, need. And so we go to、uh, the cloth、uh, total product curve. And we can find the corresponding amount of labor needed to produce that much cloth. Okay. Now, once we get these LC two and LF two, the these will be the optimal 
allocation of labor between the two sectors. Okay. Now here we already find the optimal allocation of labor between the two sectors. But remember, we lead the indifference curves to get here, okay, to find uh, the optimal solution. But in reality, um, you you know your instructor in intermediate microeconomics probably mentioned this to you. The indifference curve is super hard to get, okay, even at the individual level, not to mention at the, the economy level. Okay, this is a is a abstract abstract concepts economists come up with to be able to drive the demand curve okay but in reality it's very hard to get this okay and um do you know your indifference curve between ice cream and um and uh computers for example or your indifference curves between um pizzas and beers right most of us don't really have that curve in our mind or specific amount. So this, um, you know, poses very uh, challenges in front of us to find optimal allocation of labor. Okay. Um, that's why in the next video, we're going to um, discuss an alternative way to find the optimal allocation of labor between the two sectors. The alternative way does not depend upon the indifference curve, so we don't need this. Okay, we use a, a, a different way okay, to figure it out. All right, that's what we're going to do in the next video.